Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel, the trusty 12-point box end wrench. Usually, we're used to seeing these on the end of a combination wrench, and we'll be testing one of those too, but they also come in double 12-point like this guy. They sort of have the reputation for causing well, more knuckle exfoliation than a wellness spa run out of your local Harbor Freight's bench grinder aisle, responsible for more blood loss than a vampire's all-you-can-eat buffet. You get the idea they can slip on a bolt head, but is that in earned reputation compared to other wrenches. One of our most popular videos is testing and comparing some of these very designs, but we think now with our own automated push button wrench turning robot and a few improvements in the testing setup, plus using all the same brand among these different hex turning wrenches, Pushy can just sort of settle that debate once and for all, or at least provide us with some comparative data and based on the type of access you do have, you can make the best decision knowing these differences. Today, also now including the open end side of the wrench, a flare nut or line wrench open end as well to compare to 12 point, six point box ends and of course spline, which started out earnest enough. They made these to work on spline bolt heads, mainly aerospace fasteners. So use them for that, yeah. But these days they're sold everywhere from tool trucks to stores and Amazon as a solve all design for 12 point hex square rounded fasteners to Millions of people who've never seen a spline head bolt in their life. So let's give all of these the same shot and see exactly how much turning they can do before slipping. This is the Snap-on XB2024A and it's a 12 point double box end. So a dedicated 12 point tool. No combination action here. And we're gonna be using this 12 point on hardened to grade five or metric class 8.8 hardware, the most common you're gonna find on a vehicle and grade eight or class 10.9, which is a bit harder and stronger. Why not just on a bolt head? Well, we don't want to lose any data from bolt thread stretch or any other failings other than that of the hex shape. These are about to mangle up. Think of like a rusted in place, unmoving bolt head, which tool will put out the most torque before slipping off. What we're doing as well is instead of just turning on a as thick as possible material that each one of these tools can grasp on based on their size, we're going to only be turning the width of a standard 5 8 hex bolt head and a standard three quarter inch bolt head. As sure an open end probably has a disadvantage in pure turning power, but they're also thinner. They match these with many of the thicknesses of a standard bolt head, these open ends. So let's operate as though all these tools will only have a bolt's head worth of thickness to turn and see based on just purely design what each can muster. And all of these we were able to find and use from the same brand USA made Snap-on to try to keep things as apples to apples as possible. Let's dive in to all that. Some of these wrenches are gonna look a bit odd from your vantage point, but rest easy. Pushy is adjusted for each wrench to clear any obstructions. And the transducer, what's measuring torque is up here. So blocks, wood, they don't make a difference on this end. And we're able to confirm that by doing multiple tests and showing you typical results. This is the 5 8 12 point box end turning a 5 8 grade eight hex stock. Starting with grade eight here, contacting the average 5 8 bolt head worth of like thickness on that fastener. It sees 339.6 Newton meters. That's about 250 foot pounds more than I'm likely to hit by hand without additional leverage on this thing. So I'd say that's very good. It is grade eight though, so that helps. It is also on pristine hardware, but you may have noticed just using these in real life, once hardware is a little rounded, 12 point seems to lose all contact. And at that point, even the straight sides of an open end seem to have more purchase on it. That's my experience. That's counterintuitive to me though, at least. So with each hardware type, we're also going to show its use on 40% rounded versions to see how things change. This was done on our rotary call it fixture and bench grinder. That amount of rounding sounds like a lot, which is why brands use it for marketing, but it really isn't that much shown here. The math is basically take this dimension five eighths and this dimension across the points and remove 40% of the difference. They're still hex like it's not going to match the mangled bolt head you come into contact with next, but it is consistent for our testing purposes. With the rounded hex that you're never going to come across on a project in real life, but is repeatable. The 12 point box end is going to get up to 166 newton meters, just 122 foot pounds now on that grade eight replicating hardware and doing some actual damage to it now as well, taking some material with it, which is, yeah, that's 51.1% less in fact. I'm assuming that's not great, but we'll have to see against some other box end wrenches and also for the first time, we're gonna compare to open end 
and flare nut, so let's get into that. This is the open end of Snap-on wrenches, no flink drive plus, just a standard open end, so you might be able to compare it against what you have at work or at home. The open end of the Snap-on or really any wrench, we could use standard or stubby wrenches, doesn't seem to make a difference on our setup as the pushing arm isn't measuring anything. We only saw a six newton meter difference between these two ones, so we'll show you the higher result here to give it its best shot as it's gonna need it because, yeah. Man, 111.1 newt meters, 82 foot pounds on a new grade eight hex. It's a lot lower and that's about one third as much. On an imperfect hex, the open end does worse, but also some people might assume just completely dog water as it's probably the worst end of the wrench that's gonna be shown today, but you only use it when you need to. And in that case, it's gonna be making 57.5 newt meters or about 42 foot pounds here. My toddler could probably round this over and get it stuck in the jaws like it is here. This is 48.2% less, still much worse than the 12 point as an option, but as the fastener gets more and more rounded, it sucks at a slower rate than the 12 point, if that makes sense. Speaking of sucking less and less, these are snap-on flare nut wrenches, line wrenches for hydraulic lines like brakes, trans cooler lines, stuff like that. And they are used in place of open ends on soft fittings like those. They should be less terrible overall with two more points of contact, but still able to fit over a solid line when needed to. And snap-on are the best at making these that we've tested. They're just very good. One of the few things most people should just step onto a snap-on truck and buy. And these compared to an open end do look pretty decent, but not by as much as I would have thought, probably because we're limiting the thickness to a bolt head and not a large fitting. 137.6 newton meters, 102 foot pounds or so, 26 up on the open end, but still miles off a box end. Two more corners are good, but if they open up at the jaws, they open up, not a lot you can do about that spreading. What these do excel though at is, and I would probably have said this before even seeing the data, but now it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. It's working on imperfect hardware compared to an open end wrench. We're seeing 83.7 now, a big increase versus 57.5. It still opened up, but did more gripping along the way. That's gonna be a much lower 39.2% reduction in effectiveness compared to these at around 50%. So as the fastener becomes worse, these become comparatively better and better, or at least it seems so, so far. And here we have Spline. Happy to be able to find Spline all within the same brand here, Snap-on, though it's not something I'd normally buy myself. Listen, we all have biases. It's why we make push button dinos to just spit out data in the first place. This is one of mine. I've always felt Spline should have stayed in the hangar. It's marketed nowadays to work on 12 point hex, spline, square, rounded fasteners. How much wiggle you get before they engage and feeling them myself bite into the fastener has always made me go back to 12 point, but you know, my opinion in five bucks will get me a cup of black coffee. So let's see it this time, not swung by hand, but by our robot pushy to see how it compares. This blind box end really didn't want to let go. And then it sort of just did suddenly <coughs> catapulted off the machine after seeing 279.6 taking some meat with it off the fastener and maybe some meat off your mitts in the process, all at a lower torque than the 12 point, which I mean, I was surprised to see. On a not perfectly perfect hex in 5 8 grade eight hardware, the spline gets closer to where that 12 point was now. This is gonna see 139 newton meters and it's sort of just rounding, walking along those points here. Oddly, not as much damage as done to the perfect hex. Another surprising bit for me, we ran this again and again and saw this same sort of thing happen and well, Slightly less loss than a 12 point as the fastener gets worse. Though everything here seems to hover around the same spot so far on grade eight stuff as they become more rounded except for the flare nut wrench. Okay, time for the final boss here in grade eight, hex. Hexagons are bestagons. It should come as no surprise to you that hex shaped wrenches or sockets as most of you are most likely using does on hex shaped hardware well. But we do have it here also from Snap-on and sorry for no spoiler alert, but yeah, it does do pretty good. Too well, in fact. <coughs> this makes 390.4, 288 foot pounds and it wasn't even done yet. Well, I mean, this, this tool's done, but only because it's broken big time. But I suppose that is a lot of torque for 5 eighths or a 16 millimeter bolt head. But it also means we're kind of idiots. We didn't get to do any rounded testing or get any data from this wrench on rounded fasteners. Learned our lesson here though, do the lower torque rounded testing before we get to the standard hex. And this is a good place to pick up the remainder of our testing today as we think we can all agree that looking at this, it's gonna be on top so far. So let's see how all these others compare. 
to the number one. We're stepping up in size in fastener to three quarter inch and down in bolt grade. Grade five or class 8.8 .8 in hardness and yield strength PSI. And on this tool, we're gonna see the torque crank up way up there. We're gonna see 457.8, 338 foot pounds. And yeah, this thing shot off into outer space. This now looks cut in half and the hardware was really getting towards the end of its life as well. Luckily, we did learn our lesson though and we tested rounded hex before all of this. So that's gonna be this. On the perfectly imperfect hex, the hex wrench goes up to 363.5 newton meters, 268 foot pounds, a whole lot. On this softer hardware, it's not really stripping so much as crushing in. And well, it's not even at the corners. It's a decent design. It's crushing in the flats right before those corners with only a 20.6% loss from a new versus rounded. We'll have to see if this is a trend on grade five stuff or if this hex shaped wrench is really just that good. Let's snake this back around now to the spline because I want to see it. Here's the spline box end on three quarter inch grade five hex. Again, Wrench length doesn't matter since readings are coming from up here at the center mounted transducer. We're going to see 285.8 new meters or 62% of the hex wrench that just went. That is a big difference. You're getting twice the angles of access when you put it on a bolt head though with this type of wrench. On a rounded fastener, things are going to move along nicely and then just stop making progress at 200 and 3.7, the spline ridges are again grabbing that material and pushing it forward. You can see the lumps of material it's taking with it as it pushes forward and rounds off. That's a 28.7% reduction from being rounded as much as the others. So far, the larger the hex, even if it is softer, the less the performance loss, which tracks with my experience as well. A rounded really large fastener is still somewhat possible to take off. Okay, 12 point, we tested both the double box end and this 100th anniversary snap-on combo wrench. That's 12 point on its end. Since the last test we saw 12 point was higher, we wanted to double check things. And yeah, it was consistent, consistently higher than the spline once again. We see 360.1 here, 266 foot pounds. That is a lot. And the damage is your classic rounding of the hex points, pushing them in and flattening them out. What was interesting for us to see though is the decrease in torque this will get you once grade five hex, that type of hardware is rounded. Even on this three quarter inch size, that previously large gap between spline and this 12 point is about equal now coming down to a similar place, just 216 all the way up from 360. That's about a 40% loss. This 12 point gets worse and worse and at a faster rate compared to these once things are rounded or imperfect. The torque values are similar here, but basically if you're used to your wrench doing a certain amount of grunt, it's now 40% worse when others are only 20 to 28% disadvantaged. Okay, moving on to the ends used for access when you can't fit a box end on or a socket, the three quarter inch flare nut wrench is gonna muster just 129 newton meters, under 100 foot pounds, 95, on a perfectly good hex. The jaws are opening again and that allows some rotation on the inside of it. And that's gonna be compared to an open end wrench that's gonna see, yeah, you guessed it, less. Predictably, otherwise, what's the point of using throwing out wrenches at all? 106.4 newton meters, just 78 foot pounds. And those are some classic open end slipping marks there if you've ever seen them. The flare nut wrench is gonna turn its 129 into 101.9 when things are rounded. Doesn't look like a lot of damage to, it's just again, sort of opening up and turning within itself. And the open end is going to see less, but not as much less as a percentage than we would have expected. We think this is sort of the floor of what it can do or how bad it can go given a certain hardware size. 88.6 Newton meters, just 65 foot pounds. Again, looking like you might've seen yourself on a bolt head or two, a couple of rounded flats from the open end. But that is just a 16.7% reduction, not bad. As the bolt head becomes worse, some that weren't gonna be doing well to begin with can only drop off so far. And as a percentage of their best result for all these things, that's gonna look like this for each wrench type, for each test. With all of the results that we did get from the six point wrenches being 100% because they were best in each test. And in general, if you look at these percentages, as the bolt material gets softer, these do worse and worse compared to a six point, meaning as the hardware becomes harder, like grade eight, it becomes a closer comparison. If you average how all these do, the six point is gonna be the shining star here at an even 100%. 
Shocking, I know, but some of the most interesting, most important data we feel is how each of these designs compare to that when you're experiencing the advantage of additional angles of access. The 12 point across different bolt sizes and bolt grades did 76.4% as well as a six point. The opened end, 27.3% using a flare nut wrench instead, that's 35.5% and spline, 68.4, which orders them like this, at least under Snap-on, this is what that comparison looks like with 12-point edging out spline from Pushy's testing. Perhaps other brands, factories who only or mainly focus on spline would do better as a comparison, but this was sort of fascinating to see, a bit vindicating for my own assumptions, as I've always felt these were maybe a bit gimmicky, but the data here says potentially other things are happening as well, depending on your application. We have a lot more to see here than just green percentages as their scores. First, it's interesting to see flare nut on average loses the least when something is rounded compared to its normal performance. Excluding incomplete data here, it is made for soft hardware that will round if you look at it wrong, that type of stuff, and that shows. Even when you control for thin, like regular bolt head widths and not the thicker stuff like fittings, it's often gonna see. This sees a bigger advantage when something is rounded. And that advantage would grow even further when dealing with stuff as thick as one of these flare nut wrenches. The 12 point in spline, that's the second main story going on here. They're meeting here at a similar level of torque when something is 40% rounded, despite the 12 point starting higher, which means 12 point is falling off quick. This consistently had the most loss from perfect to imperfect hardware, which became more pronounced versus the others as that hardware went down in grade. Had we chosen a 50% rounded fastener, for example, this points to the spline likely making up ground here in its main score. And had we chose like 60 or 70% rounded, those of you who know, know, these can just turn freely on stuff like that. They don't grab anything. And that would swing the finishing placement of these much more, of course. So this data does back up spline working well. For those of you who work in the rust belt or working on drain plugs at a quick lube shop last saw, or you know, you could just use a six point socket where you can or a six point wrench if you're feeling frisky. We get frisky with that upload button every Friday making videos like these. Click subscribe if that sounds like you're kind of fun and thanks for watching.